I mentioned in the last uh, video I put up about uh, these reactors in, I think they're in Brussels, that have been shut down, but they're planning on restarting them um, next year. So let's go into this a little bit. This article is translated from French. Is the future of the reactors <clears throat> in the hands of the Federal Agency for Nuclear Control, who still has a number of questions on the test of Electrobel, that's the owner of the plant, or operator of the plant, which still has to decide on the methodology of the company. So in other words, there are still a lot of phases. The communication of GDF Suez is premature and is not based on facts, reacted the minister in response to the Honorable Member Christoph Calvo Groen. This is the AFCN who must decide in Brussels, not GDF Suez in Paris. Uh, the last has pointed out that many international experts question the level of security of the two reactors. In case of doubt, it would be wiser to close, he said. Wiser, but not profitable. Currently, the reactors Doel 3, Doel 4, and Tihange 2 are to the judgment and cause for concern with regard to possible shortage of electricity during the winter. Last October, Gerard Mestrelet, patron of GDF Suez, had already indicated that the group wanted to revive Doel 4 by the end of the year. Doel 4 had been shut down last August due to an oil leak. The other two reactors, Tihange 2 and Doel 3, were still at a standstill since last March due to tiny cracks present in their tank. In a communication published on its site, a transparency declaration, GDF Suez indicated that the reactors 3 Doel and Tihange 2 will be restarted on April 1, 2015, subject to the approval of the AFC. And this is from a, uh, a different blog here. It says, Electrobel might be trying to play political hardball, trying to blackmail the Belgian government for purely financial gain, lower taxes, higher electricity rates, and more subsidies for new power plants. Part of the typical socialize the cost, privatize the gains, corporate modus operandi. And now, that other article had mentioned Dewell 4, um, which had a wrecked turbine. And Electrobell had said the plant would remain offline until September 15th as it carried out repairs and investigated an oil leak that forced its closure on August 5th. Its French parent company, GDF Suez, confirmed that closure was due to sabotage. So, so And then they came out and said that it was not external. Like, not like somebody broke into the plant and sabotaged it. So somebody that works there, presumably, sabotaged the turbine. So what is stopping them from doing it at another reactor if it comes back online? You know, these are questions they're not answering. This just shows the insanity of this world. You can see that small red circle there is the nuclear power plant. And then... I think that says 10 miles away is the city of Antwerp with a population of 500,000 people within 10 miles. Um, then to the top of the picture on the other side of the water, it says the Netherlands. And then the harbor of Antwerp with the world's second largest petrochemical industry after Houston, Texas. So that'll have to be evacuated too if something happens here. And then the two circles on this map, the smaller circle is 100 miles, and the larger circle is 400 miles. So you can see that the population density there is the most of anywhere in Europe. And they want to restart these reactors that have cracks in them. So some background on Dewell 3's hair-thin micro-cracks. This is the same for the other reactor as well. Dewell 3 was shut down at the beginning of June 2012 for a planned inspection. The new post-Fukushima high-resolution ultrasonic inspection revealed there were thousands of semi-laminar flaws in the reactor vessel's steel rings. More investigators found a whopping 8,000 mini-ruptures as wide as 24 millimeters and as deep as 10 millimeters. These remain. This is what they want to start back up. These micro-cracks were determined to be hydrogen flakes, which make the steel more brittle and could increase the risk of the reactor vessel rupturing. The re reactor remained offline for further inspections and assessment for an entire year. Eventually, the nuclear regulator, FANC, judged the reactor could still operate safely and was restarted. So I went to the Electrobel website and found this 
So nuclear power station Tehange 2. The overhaul of Tehange 2 started August 16, 2012, as the reactor vessel uh, Tehange 2 and Dewell 3 were constructed by the same supplier. The additional inspections carried out at Dewell 3 were also implemented here. These inspections show the same type of indications. Says they're indications. They're not cracks. <laughs> they're not breaches in the containment vessel. So here's their conclusion and action plan. Electrobell has carried out an in-depth investigation in response to the indications found in the reactor vessels of Dwell 3 and Tehange 2. The results confirm the structural integrity of the reactors in question, justifying the immediate restart and safe operation of those two. Beginning December 2020, 2012, Electrobell submitted its conclusions and action plan for the restarting of both units to the FANC. It already submitted a technical dossier end of November 2012, it is now up to the FANC to provide its advice to the Belgian government. At the occasion of the restart of the reactors, it had been agreed with the AFCN to carry out additional tests in order to evaluate the behavior over time of the reactor vessels. Among all the realized tests, one of them did not deliver results in line with expert expectations. March 25th, as a safety measure, Electrobell itself had decided to stop the reactors in the expectation of additional results. Due to its importance and complexity, the program in mechanical tests and metallurgical assessments will run until autumn 2014. And then there's a link to the PDF, which among all the realized tests, one of them related to the mechanical strength of the sample analog to the composition of the concerned vessels did not deliver results in line with expert expectations. The test had been realized after accelerated radiation within a research reactor at the Nuclear Research Center. New tests will be performed. As a safety measure, Electrobell has decided to anticipate the planned outage of the two reactors as of today. This is back in June, I think, in the expectation of additional results. So basically what that means is they had a research reactor and the actual two reactors here. And the research reactor was behaving one way and the actual real-life reactors were behaving in another way, a different way, which means that something's wrong somewhere. <laughs> you know, you can't just restart it and hope that it'll be okay when it's not performing in line with expectations. So this I uh, found is an, a map of uh, pinpoints for all the reactors around the world. You can see Europe, except for Poland, basically is completely saturated. Any any accident at basically any of these reactors and there's going to be a major issue for most of Europe. And now this is the United States, obviously. Um, it's one in Mexico, one in Cuba, Cuba, one in Puerto Rico it looks like, two in Canada, and then major concentration along the eastern half of the US and then the immediate west coast. And then there's been talk of exactly why that is with all the federal land west of Mississippi, but that's for a different. And then going around the world here, we have the Mideast and Southeast Asia coming up next. And you can see it's kind of spread around. They have the, the reactor in Iran, and you'll see there's nothing in Israel, but they have research reactors. So there really should be a pin mark there in Israel. And then this is Southeast Asia. With China, South Korea, Japan, and I think the Philippines has one as well. And this is obviously food. And then finally, South America and Africa. I didn't find anything for Australia. So you can see there's, uh, I did a video on the pin mark uh, in East Argentina. And then there's one in Central Argentina. They're probably going to open one on the border with Paraguay as well. And there's another one in Brazil, close to, um, I think Rio? I'm not sure. Actually, I'm not sure what I'm not sure about that one, but there's one in Brazil and one in South Africa. So you can see there's basically four reactor sites in the entire southern hemisphere, according to this map. So it kind of makes you wonder about things. Maybe they know that northern hemisphere is destroyed, so might as well just keep pumping away. <laughs>